Hello, and welcome to part two of episode five. We are going to unwrap our model, and in the last part, we talked about concepts. Today, I'm going to show you how to unwrap this in an efficient manner. And it's not as evil or mean as you'd suspect. Let's start right off with the face. Let's just select the polygons we want. Zoom in on them, and take the ones we don't want. Now, you've probably seen or read in tutorials how to unwrap is select all the polygons and then use something like automatic unwrapping or something like that. And then from there, move into something more detailed, such as moving them around in this window. But uh, as you can see, that looks dangerous. So, we're going to do it in a better way. Select what you want. Deselect what you don't want. And I'm going to use these bottom parts when I'm unwrapping the throat separately. Whoops. We only want the face. Oh, want these areas too. Now, this is going to seem really frightening, but we're going to make this nice and simple. Look straight at the face, give it a planar map. We're applying our planar map based on the camera. We're keeping the image width and height, so it doesn't try and stretch it. What you see in the background here is the checkerboard map I've already applied as a shader. That way you can see texture distortion when I show you how awesome this method is. Now, we're going to select the area we want to be our anchor. We're going to snap it over there so it's nice and straight. Then select all the other UVs. I'm going to use this option in Maya called Unfold. Now, in Max, they have a new utility which can allow you to slowly unwrap an area with little distortion. That's what you would use. Other programs might have something similar, so go ahead and look for it. Look, nice, perfect unwrap. Well, near perfect. We didn't unwrap this part, so let's go ahead and do it. And you know what? Let's go ahead and get the areas around it, too. There we go. Since we're at it, Let's go ahead and snap this to the center. Select everything else, and unwrap. I like having straight lines to work with. There. Doesn't that look beautiful? And if you're curious, go ahead and look at that unwrap. Nice and fantastic, with just a little bit of distortion around the nose. You're never going to get rid of distortion 100%. Let's just try and get rid as much as you can. What's another area you could look to unwrap? Since I'm trying to only look for the complicated places to unwrap first, let's look at the hand. Now actually when I kit bash, I normally have the hand already unwrapped. It just makes it easier for me if I want to add something. Kit bashing is a common technique. You'll use it in actual physical modeling all the time, where you have pre-modeled parts that you can just add to any model you ever needed. As a 3D artist, you might have a small collection of parts or models that you'll just use. For example, I have a base model of a cat. If I ever want to do a feline creature, such as a lion or a house cat, I have one to work with. Same thing with a horse, dog, tree, anything really. It just allows me to save that much more time. Now, as you can see, our automatic unwrap not do the hand justice. Now, we could work with this. Do we really want to? I don't. So, let's do what we were used to. Look at it. Go for, and eh, straighten this up a little bit. Planar map. TV. Let's move to the right because we have the face up top in our workspace, and I like to keep things organized. Now, we're going to do the same thing with the bottom of the hand. We're going to planar map it. Let's look for a nice area we can make straight, kind of like what we did in our other one. How about these areas? Wrist in the middle. Select everything but those again, because they're going to be our anchors, and then unwrap. Oh, must have forgot one. 
easy way to fix it. Planar map it. Let's just move it back to where it needs to be. And there's tons of easy ways to do this. We could select the edge, and then we can do a move and sew. Ugh, that looks bad. I personally, at this point, would just select the UVs and snap it. You can use the same hotkeys in Maya that you would use when you're snapping anything else. You gotta make sure, though, that when you're when you're moving individual tries like that, that you have the normal facing the correct way. Otherwise, your texture can look different. But if you're really curious, now that we got it the actual size by snapping, move and so. Select that. Move and so. I want to select this. It would actually get somewhere over here. But look, we have a pretty strong unwrap of the bottom of the hand. So, what about this? Now, if we just do this, and we unfold, it's going to look really weird. Now, there's a few reasons it'll look like this. First, the fingers are actually connected here. And when we unwrap them, they're going to overlap. We want to stop that as much as possible. Or, as possible. So, what you could do select these inner areas here and just cut them. Then when you unwrap, it should look a lot better. Right? As you can see, they're overlapping. It's because the fingers are cylinders and we're trying to fit them on a small plane. So, what can we do to solve this? We can detach the fingers. That's not going to be too bad, right? I mean, are we really going to be worried about a seam at that level? Nope. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'm going to use the 3D window a lot when I'm unwrapping, just so I can select these. As you can see, I didn't know which of these lines to select to cut. Use the 3D window, because I knew where I wanted it. I can just grow my selection. Oh, it did not cut it the way I thought. So some of these are still connected somehow. So let's figure this out. Selecting UVs that are on top of each other is really interesting. Uh, oh, I see what I did. These areas over here. Let's go ahead and unwrap this just so you can see. There was more areas to cut that I just didn't get. Go ahead and cut them. Now we can select it through here. Unfold. And let's move them up. Now we're going to have some fun here. I'll show you how this works. See? Nice and simple, right? And we can resize them later. This isn't too complicated, right? It's not scary at all. Who needs Hedis UV layout? Well, I guess if you have a modeling package that has a really bad unwrapper, like an old version of Max, you probably need Hedis UV layout. Now, for right now, since we really don't know what texture space to give these, until we're finished unwrapping, let's size them like this. Again, I want this flat, because it's the rest. Let's unwrap everything else. See what it does. Mm, it's not bad, I guess, but let's go ahead and disconnect the thumb. Where is an area we can disconnect it at? How about this area? Yep, that looks like a thumb for a low-poly character. Boom. Right there. 
There we go. Nice unwrap. Now, how do we make it to where we were talking about pixel density? How do we make it to where the unwrap for this is great for pixel density? Now, I mentioned that these hands are so small that we really don't need the detail. But what if you're making a higher poly character, or you have hands that you want to detail for such a game like a rhythm-based game, like a piano game for the iPhone, let's say? Well, that checker map. Let's go ahead and assign it. I feel bad because I didn't name it. Ooh, such a nub. So, sorry about that short pause. Anyways, so how do you check pixel density on a model? Well, you use a checkered map. Or really any map. I like checkered because it's easy to tell. So as you can see, right now, we want the bottom of these squares to be the same size as the tops of these squares, and the fingers to be the same. So, easiest way to do that is first, if you have any idea of the size of your own model, you can generally guess. These are the two fingers, so scale them up. We can even move this around until some squares line up and try and get the width of them, because we already know it's unwrapped perfectly. So if we get the width, we get the height. There we go. Let's do it with this finger, just as another demonstration. Oh, that's too small, because the width doesn't work. But does it work on the bottom? Oh, wait, we can't tell. Oh, you might have noticed there's a lot of distortion on the tip of the finger. Well, I don't care. Tip of the finger is not going to be highly detailed. If you wanted tip of the finger to be highly detailed, Make some cuts right here and here. So, whoops, forgot to start my stopwatch. So, mm, we'll line this up as best we can. We'll try and get a square tile in the middle of the finger to make it easy for us. Like that. And we'll just size up and down until it's about appropriate. And remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. That works. And we'll do it for this finger. Remember, there's going to be distortion, but we're looking for minimal distortion. That's good. Now for the thumb. Remember, we can rotate this to make it easier for us. If any of you guys are curious, I'm looking over here. Obviously, this needs to be scaled. And we'll rotate this back. Yay, we have unwrapped our hand. So we have the hand, the face. Oh, but did we scale those? Nope. Now we have an easy way to figure out. Because remember, these should be connected. Or at least, generally the same size. So, easy way to figure that out. Line it up. Scale down until it is. There we go. And, as you see, finger fits finger fits. We're good. And now we have our hands. Now I'm going to continue to unwrap this, and then when I come back, we're going to lay it all out. Okay, so I just unwrapped everything. As you can see, it's all here. Let me turn off wireframe on shaded now. <laughs> 